Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You know the beginning from the end. You are the Prince of Peace, the name above all names, the King of Kings. Every nation, every tongue will bow before you. Father God, today we gather to celebrate and commemorate another milestone in the pages of your book as we honor and recognize the good work that you first began in us and in this graduating class of 2020, that you will bring it to completion upon the return of your Son, Jesus the Christ. As we acknowledge all that you are in our lives and in the midst of these challenging times for our entire nation and the world, we stand triumphantly on the inerrancy of your word and the promise that has come through the hearing and the receiving of your Son as our Lord and our Savior. Lord, as we look to you for divine inspiration and godly wisdom. We thank you for providing the governing board at Faith International University to help guide and steer this biblical training center through the president, Dr. Michael Adams, and the Faith Administration. You have assembled a faculty and a staff, Father God, who truly lead with servant hearts as they dedicate their lives in obedience to you. To the class of 2020, we pray that whether this is your first second, or even third terminal degree with us at Faith International, that you are influencers in the spheres in which encompass you. Take heed 
the knowledge and the skills acquired through your degree program are to be put into use on the battlefield. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church and the ministries that the Lord has called you to serve him. We pray God's blessing upon you, graduating class of 2020. May the enemy tremble, knowing that you are equipped more fully to forcefully advance God's kingdom. It is in the most powerful and most majestic name above all names that we pray. And the people of the church said amen. 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 A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. The faculty may be seated, and if you're standing at home, you may be seated as well. On behalf of the governing board, the faculty, and the administration, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 48th annual commencement of Faith International University and Seminary. Before this time, we have held 47 commencements in person, but The times, they are a-changing, and rather than quote Bob Dylan, I suppose it more fitting to quote the Bible and to be like the men of Issachar who knew the signs of the times. These are definitely different times. But it is a prayerful, certainly unique day, but it should also be a celebratory day as well. And I hope you're doing that at home, surrounded by family and friends, being as socially distanced as you deem necessary. As we prudently greet the class of 2020 in this manner, I hope that those of you who wish to graduate in person will think about doing so at our commencement in Los Angeles this year in early October or in the July commencement next year. We would love to have you participate, if at all possible. Our 2020 graduates represent a scholarly and noble group of Christian disciples who have grown strong both intellectually and spiritually. They are students who have been diligent in their studies to show themselves approved. They are graduates of a seminary founded 51 years ago and built on the inerrancy of Holy Scripture, and they'll continue to uphold faithfully the Word of God in whatever capacity the Lord ordains. Our school is built on the legacy of many, 
but none more so than that of our late president and founder, the Reverend Dr. R. H. Radal, a longtime visionary pastor with an incredible tenor voice. And it's a delight later on in this program to have a recording of some music that he and his two sons, Mark and Paul, who currently sit on our governing board, they'll be presenting that, offering those songs in just a moment. It's also a delight to recognize members of our distinguished faculty who are here. We thank you for Emmanuel uh, Lutheran Church for hosting this event and for its dynamic leader, the Reverend Dan Shaw. Pastor Shaw will be bringing our message, that is, he'll be bringing our charge to the graduates this evening in just a moment as well. This commencement will run smoothly because of the efforts of our registrar. You already heard from him, Dr. Andrew Kayanen, and of course our audio and video technician, Nate Griffin. We thank you very much. There are two things I inevitably say at our annual commencement. The first is for the graduates. It was said many years ago by Thomas Gillespie, the former president of Princeton Theological Seminary, and that is, the world is not waiting with bated breath for your arrival upon the scene. As a matter of fact, for the world, the opposite is true. Yet you live to serve Jesus Christ and obey the Word of God no matter how much you may offend the world. And although the world may not be excited about you, we are. Angels rejoice over you and demons tremble. And the second thing I always say is for those who are witnessing the event or surrounding you currently. And that is, you're here for a dual purpose. You're here to come under the hearing of the Word, of which these graduates are living letters, living epistles, and you're here to celebrate, that is, make some noise, to clap and cheer when you hear that special name called. I encourage it. The graduates have earned it. They've plunged deeper into the Word of God, they know that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, not a rewarder of those who casually inquire about Him. God is pleased with the efforts of our graduates, and so we cheer them on. So welcome to a unique and certainly momentous event. Congratulations to the graduates, the class of 2020. May God be praised and glorified in all we say and do. And I now ask that the Reverend Dr. Q Hyun Lee, Executive Dean of International Programs, bring a greeting as well. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Welcome, class of 2020. Families and friends and guests who are watching this event online. For over 50 years, Faith International University has been providing education and professional training for ministers, lay leaders, and leaders of the next generations to serve the kingdom of God based upon the inerrancy of the Bible and its principles. During the course of our history, we have been reaching out and providing our education for different kinds of ethnic groups, not only in this country, but also for the people abroad. Among them, we have been privileged to serve African-Americans and Africans, Asian-Americans and Asians, especially Koreans by establishing Korean division in 25 years ago with longer history of operation with Korea. We also established Chinese division in rather recent years while we are hoping for establishing Hispanic division in our future. It has become one of our traditions for me to speak a few words in Korean, as I have been serving our Korean division for about 25 years. As I speak a few words in Korean, please use your gift of tongues or gift of interpretation or your language skills, if you do have, to understand it. 반영합니다. 2020학년도 졸업생 여러분 그리고 가족 친지 여러분 본 어, 졸업식에 어, 이렇게 참여하신 것을 환영하고 또 졸업하는 우리 졸업생 여러분들을 축하합니다. 수고하셨습니다. 
많은 수고들과 여러 가지 애들을 쓰시면서 학습, 과제, 활동 그리고 박사 과정에 있어서는 논문까지 여러 과정을 거치며 많은 노력들을 마무리하시고 이 모든 것들을 소정의 기준을 통과하셔서 본 졸업의 장에 나오신 것으로 압니다. 이번 2020년도는 좀더 의미 깊은 졸업식이 되는 것 같습니다. 전염병으로 인한 여러 가지 어려움들을 우리가 모두 겪고 있는 그런 시기에 그런 악조건들과 함께 어려움들과 함께 여러분들 학업의 과정들을 성실히 수행하시고 끝까지 잘 마무리를 하셔서 이 자리에까지 오신 줄로 믿습니다. 그러므로 이 자리에 오시게 된 여러 졸업생 여러분들의 노고와 참여가 큰 의미가 있을 것을 믿고 부탁드리고 싶은 말씀은 이런 과정을 거치면서 얻게 된이 졸업의 의미와 함께 여러분이 다시 이 각양의 사역의 장으로 나가실 때또 다른 모양과 형태의 어려움들과 도전들을 경험하실 것이라는 것을 생각하면서 여러분들 믿음과 헌신으로 잘 극복해내시기를 주의 이름으로 어, 부탁드립니다. Thank you for your understanding. Bless you all. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Lee, for that greeting. I'm sure the uh, second part of that was as scintillating as the first. At this time, we're going to present some music to be performed by the late Reverend Dr. R.H. Radal, the school's founder, and his two sons, Mark and Paul. They'll be singing, Onward, Christian Soldiers. Onward, Christian Soldiers, on to be. Soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banners go Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward, 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 onward. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we Divided, all one body we, one body, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. We're marching onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus. Go. Onward then, ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with us your voices in the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ our King. This through countless ages men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Marching with the cross of Christ,
At this time, I present to you our commencement speaker, the Reverend Dan Shaw. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to talk to you tonight, and it's such an honor to be up here with you all. And to have this occur at Emmanuel Lutheran Church here in Tacoma is really special to our church, and I hope this night is special to you as well. It's a thank you to Dr. Adams for graciously inviting uh, me to speak and for, for our church to host. So what we're going to do for the next 10 or 11 minutes, I just want to share with you four principles that come from Scripture, which I'm sure you've heard taught to you over the course of however long your studies have taken by these gentlemen and by other men and women at the, at the at faith these are principles that are all about what it means to share the gospel because that's ultimately what we're studying for because if we're not studying to share the gospel then we're not studying for the gospel and we're not studying for the mission of Jesus Christ then it's then we're not on mission so this is about sharing the gospel advancing the gospel and saving pe people having salvation experience deep inside their hearts. And so there's a couple principles that we get from the Apostle Paul that I would like to share with you, which you've heard, but in my ministry experience, I've been a pastor for 18 years in revitalization projects, a uh, military chaplain for 18 years, deployed with the Marine Corps to Iraq in 2007, and basically started a church from scratch and have experienced also ministry through coaching football at Bellarmine Prep here in Tacoma. So I have, I have a wide range in these principles that I'm going to give you. I've learned through this experience. It'd just be better if you could just listen today or listen for the last couple of years and you don't have to learn from the experience or just read your Bible and say, oh, that's what the Bible says. That's what I need to do. That's actually the simpler method. So lock in and let's pay attention to these four principles. The first one comes from 1 Thessalonians 1 and it's be incarnational. They teach you this in the military. What does Paul say in 1 Thessalonians 1? You know how I lived among you. Now, what that means I didn't experience until I was a military chaplain is that Jesus Christ does not call you as a Christian leader to be a commuter to your congregation or to your people. We don't commute. We live among them. If they're going through junk, we go through junk. If they're rejoicing, we rejoice. If they need prayer, we're there with them. We're experiencing everything that the community is. And if we're not, Jesus Christ didn't commute from heaven yes, sir. and save us. Is that correct? Yes, correct? So what did Jesus Christ do? He came and he, what does John chapter one, it says verse 14, and the word became flesh and what? Tabernacled among us, right? And, li and lived among us. So your ministry has to be incarnational. There's a great book. It's not a Christian book written by Stephen Pressfield called The Gates of Fire. And it's about the Spartans at the Thermopylae Gates. And it's historical fiction. And the Persians were asking the Spartans about their leader, who was King Leonidas. And they asked, they asked them, well, where does your king stay? And they said, where do you guys stay? Where does your king stay? Expecting some difference. Because obviously with Xerxes, there were differences between how he lived and how his troops lived. And they said, well, we live in this dirt hole over here and, and Leonidas lives in that dirt hole over there. And that's the difference. There is no difference. It's incarnational. You're with your people. And I, the military ministry taught me that. You are in, if they're getting shot at, you're getting shot at. If you're dirty, if they're dirty, you're dirty. And this is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians. I, you know how I lived among you. Be incarnational. Do not commute to your ministry. Number two, who is your ministry for? And I can't believe it. And we did not collude on this. I had planned to speak on 2 Timothy 2. And he, you, when you read that, you, you can't see me. I'm off camera. My jaw just about went, whoa. And specifically verses 8, 9, and 10, where he says, Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Who is your ministry for? It was, is the second point. Ask yourself that question. And I didn't learn this again until about five or six or seven years into being a pastor that my ministry primarily at first was for me. That's not good. What does Paul say here? Your ministry is you do everything for the sake of the elect. That is the people you're sharing the gospel with. Your ministry is not for you. There's a great book written by a, well, it's compiled, but it's Charles Spurgeon. You guys familiar with it? It says, uh, Lectures to My Students. And in that book, he basically alludes to a principle which really struck, struck at my heart, where Spurgeon basically says, don't preach sermons to save yourself. 
Well, what did he mean by that? I didn't even understand what he meant by that until I thought about it for a while. Don't go into the ministry to gain your own salvation. So what he's saying there is that you don't get, and how would you gain your own salvation? Guys, the human heart has literally limitless ways of, of self-glorification and self-elevation. And ministry is no exception where we go into it to be seen as in, 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 a, in a role of significance, to be have people say, oh, that was so amazing what you said. I was so moved. I, you're so wonderful. And what, what's happening? It's self-justification. And you could be in the pulpit preaching about justification by faith alone, and you're justifying yourself. So that, it, it, Paul says you do everything for the sake of the elect. Who is your ministry for? And if it's for you, Guess what else? The sheep are going to sniff you out too, because the sheep may be, as I was talking about in my sermon this morning, sheep in the, and you know, traditionally may not be too smart, but sheep will, people that know the Lord will sniff you out. And they know a wolf when they know, when they hear one. And here, I'll just read you Spurgeon. Here's the quote. He says, ministers, deacons, and elders may all be wise, but if the sacred dove departs and the spirit of strife enters, it's all over for us. Brothers, our system will not work without the Spirit of God, and I am glad it will not. For its stoppages and breakages call our attention to the fact of His absence. Our system was never intended to promote the glory of priests and pastors, but it is calculated to educate manly Christians who will not take their faith at second hand. What's he saying? We're not going to, people will not take it from a fraud, and people know that the Holy Spirit knows before your people that if you're, if you're not, engaged in ministry for the elect and not for yourself. The Holy Spirit knows it and your people will know it. Number three, Paul says, look at the gospel for which I'm suffering. Don't Jesus Christ says, I believe it's in Matthew 13. Everyone will hate you because of me. So if you're going into ministry to be liked, that is not going to happen. Everyone will hate you. And if you're unwilling to be hated, you're not going to be a faithful proclaimer of God's word. Because God's word will engender opposition from the enemy. It will engender opposition from the world. And it will engender opposition from people's just plain sinful selves. And you will suffer. This is Jesus. Jesus Christ not only uh, tells us it's going to happen. He promises us it's will. It's not an if. It's a when. It's going to happen. You are going to suffer. You are going to lose social status perhaps. You may even have to give up your job. Who knows? For those first, obviously, generation of Christians and subsequent generations, they had to give up their very, they had to give up their very life. We die for the gospel. I think until a Christian is a leader is willing to say they will die for the gospel, what, then they can't lead. Because look at what did Luther say in that wonderful hymn that we marched into? Were, Mighty fortresses are God. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse? Though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. In other words, I already know who won the ultimate victory, so I'm not worried about these minor battles where it appears that it's not going to go well for me. I know Jesus wins the ultimate victory. That doesn't mean Dan gets to win these little victories, but my or little defeats. I may have to endure that. I may have to endure suffering. Jesus says, if they did this to me, they're going to do it to you. So just get ready. Don't view that as God's absence. Don't view that as you're not doing a good job. You may be doing exactly what you should be doing. I had a professor at seminary, Jim Kittleson, a Reformation scholar. He said, Dan, if you're doing your job correctly, you should be preaching the pews empty. That is that the message of the gospel should be cutting, right? It doesn't mean you go in and tear people down. No, the gospel will do that okay. The gospel tells us that you're a sinner. And that's that for some people, that's going to be a cut. And you can't tell people that they're going to be saved without talking about sin. And when you talk about sin, then you get to talk about a savior. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, our hearts to fear and grace my fears relieved, always unfortunately in that order. So you're going to suffer. And then lastly, Paul says, look, I love verse eight, don't you guys? It says, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. One of my, one of my favorite uh, stories is about a guy named Nels Ferre. He was a a Lutheran systematic theologian from Scandinavia, and he came to the United States. He was born in 1908. He came to the United States uh, from Sweden, from a very, very destitute family. And he was always fond of telling the story when he left Scandinavia, I believe it was Sweden, to come to the United States. He tells this uh, story, which is just so pertinent to what the Apostle Paul just said, what I just read from Paul in verse 8. His mom knew that 
he would get a better education in the United States. His mom knew that he would be better taken care of. And so she was going to send him to go live in America, knowing that there's a good chance, right, that you'd never see each other again. I mean, that, you know, for like a 10-year-old boy, that's, that's hard. And he says, the night before I was to leave, he goes, it was just gut-wrenching. I was to leave, and he says, my mom, I figured she'd, she'd, we'd have dinner together, and she'd say something to me to comfort me, whatever. You know, give me some word or some embrace. And he goes, and my mom, who's usually affectionate, said nothing. He goes, I went to bed crying. Woke up the next morning, thought she would say something during breakfast. No. The, the, the ride to the train station, thought she would say something. Nothing. So he's just utterly just anxious and bound, knowing that he's probably never going to see his mom again. And he gets on the train, and she doesn't even say goodbye to him, or I love you, nothing. He's bawling, and he sits down, and as as the train starts to pull out of the station, this is so cool, true story. He says, I saw something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. He says, there was my mom running after the train as it was beginning to pull out. And she had a piece of paper in her hand. And she put it up to the window where I was seated. And I read it. Now, remember, she hasn't said a word to him to bring him comfort. And it's the last thing she's going to tell her boy. I read it. And you know what it said? Remember Jesus most of all. If you had to tell your son or daughter something, the last thing you could tell them, wouldn't it be just that? Remember Jesus most of all. And it's no surprise, guys, that this is coming. This is written in 2 Timothy when the, the man who penned it or had a scribe pen, pen, or pen it for him knew that he was already being poured out like a drink offering and his time was coming. And he wanted to tell Timothy one last thing he should do. Remember Jesus most of all. You're going to be going into ministries, classrooms, uh, places where you're giving counseling maybe into the military. Who knows where the Lord is going to take you? There's a word from Nels Frey's mom today, and it's actually, she just got it from the Apostle Paul. When you are in these ministries, when, it's, when, it, when you're suffering, when, you're, when, the, when it's dark, when the clouds are coming on and it seems like the enemy's winning, he hasn't. Remember Jesus most of all. And I'm sure that's what these men would all say that you should be doing. Just remember Jesus Amen. most of of all. Father, um, I pray a special blessing over all of us today that they, all of us here, that we may know who we're working for and who's in charge and that we may remember him most of all. When the enemy wants to tell us that we are, we are not loved, that we are sinners, we know that we are loved. And because Lord Jesus Christ, your body was broken for us and you were gloriously raised for us. So we know who we are because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know because it's the gospel, if it were up to us to achieve some measure of identity, we wouldn't. We know who we are because of Jesus, and we thank you for that. I pray as we go forward today, Lord, that you would fill everyone here and everyone who's listening with a godly zeal to bring about the message of salvation, the word of life to a world, especially right now, even in our country, that so desperately needs it. And I pray this in the strong and certain name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shaw. Whenever I'm in town, and I've been in town more since COVID, not traveling as much, if I can hang out with anybody, I hang out with Dan Shaw. He's a great teacher. He's a great preacher. He and his wife, Kim, have got a great church going here in Tacoma. Love to be with them, and I hope you were blessed by that as well. I uh, love that very much. At this point in time, however, it is... The time you've been waiting for, the presentation of the graduates. So this year, we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to have some of our faculty come up and go through uh, certain names, certain degrees. I'm excited about that. Usually, when we're live, we always practice this at least once. We'll do it briefly for you at home. You can try this, because this is where you're going to make some noise. So I'm going to say some names, and after I say those names, you cheer. So this first, the first names are Andrew 
Benjamin Gabriel Hardy. And you're cheering. Come on. I expect it here too, gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second name is Ethan Backey. Third name, Esme Gomez. And of course, those are my five grandchildren. So they always get a shout out at the graduation. This is what we expect to have you do with those people that you uh, are surrounding you. Treat the graduates with uh, great acclaim. At this time, I'm going to have uh, Dr. John Wheeler, our Executive Vice President for Administration, and also an online instructor. Most of you have had a class with him. He's going to come up with Dr. Uh, Q Hyun Lee, our other Executive Director of International Programs, and they will announce our, some of our Bachelor of Arts degrees. Okay. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Business, cum laude, Selena S. Hillhorse. Also in the Bachelor of Arts in Business, graduating summa cum laude, Tracy Houston. Graduating in the Bachelor of Arts in Business, Isaac Christian. Huffman. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Education. Magna Cum Laude. Eugene Kim. Kim Yu Jin. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Education. Magna Cum Laude. Kang Uk Lee. Yi Kang Uk. Bachelor of Arts in Education, summa cum laude, Michaela Christine Perrick. Bachelor of Arts of Education, magna cum laude, Christopher R. Sheridan. Bachelor of Arts in Education, with a specialty in early childhood education, graduating magna cum laude, Wu Yun Son, Son Wu Yun. Graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, summa cum laude, Anna Faith Conteval. Graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, cum laude, Todrick Deshaun Johnson. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, magna cum laude, Jacob Mason. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, Summa cum laude, Jordan McLeod. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Business and Administration, cum laude, Anna McKinsey Sheehan. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Children's Ministry and Church and Nonprofit Administration, graduating magna cum laude, Tiffany A. Thornton. And the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Psychology and Counseling, graduating cum laude, Chandler Brooks Rodriguez. I now present the Reverend Tyrone Hardy, who will be reading along with Dr. Lee for the other bachelor's degrees. These students will be receiving their Bachelor of Arts in Religion. Leah An. An He Su. Graduating with summa cum laude, Matthew Todd Anderson. Mark Russell Birch, summa cum laude. Jason Boucher. Zelias Kanani, cum laude. Derek L. Celestine, Sr. Ryan Farrell, summa cum laude. Drake A. Henderson, 
magnum cum laude. Gregory Kentrell Killens Sr., magna cum laude. Eun Young Kim, Kim Eun Young, cum laude. Kyung Hee Kim, Kim Kyung Hee. Glenn E. Lance, magna cum laude. Alvin Malave Jr., summa cum laude. Lorraine Allen Munnerlin. Wesley Ray Newsom, summa cum laude. Cynthia Lynn Parker. Aaron M. Ricker, summa cum laude. Randy L. Seals. Sun Hee Shin, Shin Sun Hee, summa cum laude. Kenneth William Sutton, summa cum laude. Kelvin Lederick Thomas. He Young Watson, Watson He Young, summa cum laude. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Religion with an emphasis in pastoral ministry, Shane Lee Lewis, magna cum laude. Hyo Shik Kim, Kim Hyo Shik. Yep. Now that's for DIS, so. <laughs> At this time, we will announce those receiving the master's degrees beginning with the master of arts in christian counseling young m on an young m young ju cho cho young ju michaela yavon folk sung he lee yi sung he Master of Arts in Christian Counseling, Edward T. Gullahue. Receiving the Master of Arts in Christian Education, Sky Danielle Dua. Master of Arts in Christian Education, April and Jeanette Mallory Green. Master of Arts in Education in Adult Geriatric Education and Care, Tia Young Kim. Kim Young. Master of Arts in Education with an emphasis in Adolescent Education, Sung Yun Cho. Cho Sung Yun. Master of Arts in Leadership Ministry, Molly Hall Fairchild. David Edward Hewitt. Joseph Lasse Kasanga, Terence A. Nixon, Kimberly Dawn Wheeler, Master of Arts in Theological Studies, Shin Un Cho, Cho Shin Un, Lawrence E. Copeland, Jr., Rodney D. Jeter, Sung Tae Kim. Kim Sung Tae. Mary Alina Valoni. Un Mi Yi. Yi Un Mi. James Joseph Jackson Jr., Master of Arts in Theological Studies with a concentration in apologetics. Master of Divinity, Leslie Phyllis Holland. Norman Jared Howard. Andrew Zane Lowe. And Harrison M. Nungu. This represents our master's class 2020. At this time, I'd like to introduce the leader of our doctor ministry program, our program coordinator, Dr. Bruce Benoski.
a few graduates this year from the Doctor of Ministry program, and uh, one from our an initial a graduate from our Chinese division too, which is very exciting. Doctor of Ministry and Strategic Leadership is Emmett J. Lee. Our first graduate from the Chinese division, Master of Divinity and Strategic Leadership, Von Yi Ben. Good accomplishment. And finally, with a Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Leadership, Stacy Burdick. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Bernoski. This time I would like to bring up the DSL, Dr. Strategic Leadership Coordinator. He's also the director of uh, the professional doctorate program at Faith International University. He also serves as the dean of the School of Counseling and Care. Uh, Dr. Bronowski serves as the dean of uh, Disciple School of Discipleship and Applied Studies. Uh, Dr. Tilly has a few more titles, but I, I, I won't go into all those. We'll just let him come up and announce his names. <clears throat> The Doctor of Strategic Leadership is a rigorous 80 quarter hour professional degree, culminating with a field research project and report to expand the kingdom of God through demonstrable change by marketplace ministry or service. I am honored to read the names of the graduates of the Doctor of Strategic Leadership and congratulate them. Gary Wayne Benton. Sheila R. W. Copeland. Vanya Lee Lewis Thornton. Elizabeth Ann Wilson. Vincent Don P. Fortune. Once again, congratulations to all. Just several more degrees. We have a uh, graduate certificate in leadership in professional development, and that has been accomplished by Chu Ping Kuang. We have two Doctor of Religion degrees. Our first is Darren David Crenshaw and James Nathaniel Hassel. And at this point, our last two degrees for this class are the Doctor of Humane Letters. And the Doctor of Humane Letters, those uh, degrees are honorary, and they're given because of special service, special recognition to many years of Christian service. And our first honorary doctorate, Doctor of Humane Letters, goes to Jeffrey C. Fraley. Also receiving the Doctor of Humane Letters, Ivy Reeves, Jr. Once more, let's celebrate our class, our graduates of 2020 with thunderous applause. At this point in time, we'll begin our recessional in just a moment with just a word of prayer and a benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful commencement service. We thank you for these graduates who are dedicated to you. Make them even greater disciples for your cause. Help them to go forth with boldness into the world, proclaiming the inerrant word of God, telling people about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us stand for the benediction. <clears throat> First in Hebrew, then in English, Father, we 
The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace, celebrating. Amen. Amen. Yeah.